Okay, question one. The elements nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. Let's start with, they can form negative ions, right? Okay, well, I pulled just this little bit of the periodic table, group five. Uh, oh, sorry, I've got my rubber on for this one. Let's change it. Okay, right, okay. Uh, this is group five, six, seven, and eight or zero. Okay, so can form negative ions. So nitrogen has has an arrangement of 2, 5. So yes, that's going to go to 2, 8. It's going to have a 3 minus. And oxygen with its 2, 6 is going to go to 2, 8. And so it's going to be O, 2 minus. And fluorine with its 2, 7 is going to go to 2, 8. And so it's going to be F minus. However, neon is already 2, 8. That means it's not going to have this. So no. Are made up of diatomic molecules same deal with neon okay so nitrogen yes that's one of our diatomics so is oxygen so is fluorine however you remember it you're you know I have no bright or clever friends or if you like the all the gens and all the ions make it genuine make it genuine or if you prefer your random things like uh, Brinklehoff or Honkel Fibber, any of the whatever nonsense ways you remember it but these are your diatomics, neon is not in there so let's get rid of that. Have single bonds between the atoms, well nitrogen is actually a triple Oxygen is a double, fluorine is a single, and neon is still refusing to do anything, so no. Are gases at room temperature? Let's have a look at these melting and boiling points categorically. Yes. Okay, question two. Which of the following equations represents first ionisation energy of fluorine? Right, all you're going to do is you're going to go straight to your data book and you're going to look at the top of the page which has this definition. The first ionisation energy of an element E refers to this reaction. And I am looking for fluorine, so that's got to be F with a G goes to F plus with a G plus E minus. No other options, that's the only thing it can be. That's it. Which of the following atoms has least attraction for bonding electrons? So yet again, I have gone and got the same page. Okay, so ionizations and electron activities, actually not the whole page because I didn't have to go that far. Right, we are looking for the least attraction. That's important that we get this the right way around. So least attraction means it needs to have the lowest electron activity on the polling scale for this. So we are looking at carbon. Here we go, 2.5 for carbon. Nitrogen. 3, so carbon in the lead for least attraction at the moment. Um, phosphorus down here, 2.2, it's taken over from carbon. And silicon, 1.9, wins the whole thing. Okay, so our um, least attractive for bonding electrons is silicon. Question 4, which of the following is not an example of a van der Waals force? Okay, um, so you're expected to know that van der Waals forces are all of the electrostatic um, attractions that you have. So all of the electrostatics would include, at the lowest end, your London dispersion forces. We then have dipole-dipole attractions. And then of the dipole-dipole attractions, we then have hydrogen bonds being the strongest ones of those. And that's your lot. So not an example is a covalent bond. Question five, which of the following has more than one type of van der Waal force operating between its molecules in the liquid state? Okay, this is reasonably tricky. Okay, so what we're looking for is, have we got LDFs, which you have everywhere? Uh, have we got dipole dipole? Or have we got within that hydrogen bond. So basically it's the same question really as the last one in terms of knowledge points. Okay, so bromine in here. So bromine, the only thing that's going to happen in bromine is that we're going to have London dispersion. Okay, in this one we've got a dipole setup, but then it's non-polar. So we're looking again at just 
LDFs. Okay. And for this one, we have polarities in the bond. Okay, so we've got dipoles that can be set up and in fact we can go to hydrogen bond for that one and we'll also have LDF so this is the one we're looking for this one we've got polar bonds but it's a non-polar molecule so that's just LDFs as well that looks very scribbly okay hope we followed right question six oil molecules are more likely to react with oxygen in the air than fat molecules okay statement of fact during the reaction the oil molecules what are we looking for here? Okay, so if they react with oxygen, then they cannot be reduced. They would be oxidized. Okay. They become rancid. That's the definition. And that's the one you're looking for. Okay. Just to be absolutely clear, um, if you were hydrolyzing the oil molecules, what you'd be doing is breaking them up from the, let's oh, do a little doodle here, uh, glycerol molecule with your chains at the side and hydrolyzing would mean that you'd be snapping in here so breaking them apart you're not doing that and becoming unsaturated would mean that you were adding in double bonds which is not going to happen if you're reacting something onto it so definitely not that one okay oh sorry okay question seven which of the following mixtures will form when sodium hydroxide is added to a mixture of propanol and ethanoic acid Right, so first of all, let's be clear of what's happening here. We've got an alkali. Now, you might look at this and go, well, I've got an acid and an alcohol, so that is going to give me the ester. However, the ester only forms when we're using an acid for catalysis. It is not the alkali. The alkali will actually break an ester back up. So we are not going to form any of these ester forms. Okay, so get rid of that. Okay, so now your question is, what was formed with the rest of it? Okay, so what we've got is propanol and we have ethanoic acid. And oic acid. Okay, now what I'm adding to it is an alkali. Well, that's, that's just a straightforward acid and alkali gives me my salt plus water. Sodium ethanoate and water okay propanol on the other hand isn't going to react at all so i'm going to be left with propanol and sodium ethanoate and that's why we have that one okay question eight oils contain carbon to carbon double bonds which can undergo addition reactions with iodine the iodine number of an oil is the mass of iodine in grams that will react with 100 grams of oil which line in the table shows the oil that is likely to have the lowest melting point? Okay, so what we've got here is the more iodine you have, okay, the more unsaturation, okay, which would be more oily, right? So, because the more oil that will react with it, the more double bonds we must have had. Okay, so that's more oiliness. Okay, so the line on the table that shows the one to have the lowest melting point, so the most oily thing that we can find, would be the thing with the highest iodine number. So, therefore, B. Question 9. When an oil is hydrolyzed, which of the following molecules is always produced? Well, actually, I mentioned this one a little bit further up. Okay, what we have in every single oil and fat is we have a triglyceride so it's glycerol with ester links across the way to your whatever your fatty acid chain is here and also on this one and also on this one so if we hydrolyze that breaking in here we end up with propan one two three trial or glycerol. You're just expected to know it. Being very careful in how it's actually drawn though, which is why B is correct. The other two are very, by the way, this one's down, down here, we've got very common um, fatty acids there, but we don't get them in all. And it does say 
which of the molecules is always produced. Okay, enzymes are involved in the browning of cut fruit. One reaction taking place is, and they give you this, which of the following correctly describes the above reaction? Okay, so what have we done here? We have added in oxygen, and in doing that, we have increased the oxygen to hydrogen ratio because we have changed this from C6H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, H6, O2, to C6, H4, O2. Okay, so overall we now have more oxygens relative to hydrogen. That is an oxidation. If we'd done the opposite of that, it would have been reduction. Hydrolysis would have been us breaking it into smaller sections, which we're not doing, and we're not joining it to something else while removing a small molecule, which would have been condensation. Okay.